Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our live coverage of the latest mission from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. I'm Will Robinson-Smith, and I'll be providing our commentary for the duration of this coverage. We are broadcasting from the Spaceflight Now News Bureau here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Our editor, Stephen Young, is, of course, running the technical operations of the broadcast. Adam Bernstein preparing to track the rocket this evening and do some still photography as well. And our Michael Kane is the evening off, but may be able to snap some images of the launch from his vantage point. And if you'd like to follow them and keep up with their launch photography, here are their handles on X, formerly known as Twitter. We'll also have support for our launch coverage tonight from our friends Pete Carson and Chuck Briggs. We're now T minus 57 minutes, 30 seconds and counting from the liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket you see there at the heart of your screen. This is the center of historic launch complex 39A. In less than an hour, SpaceX will attempt to launch the Starlink Group 6-51 mission, which will be the 26th dedicated flight for Starlink satellites this year. SpaceX is targeting a teaser liftoff time of 5.26 p.m. Eastern. For our viewers joining us around the world, that is 21.26 UTC. If you'd like to help support our coverage of the space program, and you're joining us this afternoon, one of the 1,300 or so, really appreciate you being here. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button to allow more folks to find this live coverage as we step on through the next 56 and a half minutes. And if you're not a Spaceflight Now uh, subscriber, now is a great time to do so as we have a lot of great coverage coming up as we close in on the back half of 20 or of uh, April. May will be just around the corner, and with that, will bring the first crew flight test of Boeing Starliner spacecraft. Got a lot of coverage coming your way on that mission, beginning with a video that will actually go up pretty close to the end or shortly after this launch goes, covering the rollout of the Starliner spacecraft out to Pad 41 over at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. So if you are... Uh, subscriber, be sure to hit the bell icon and then you'll get notified when that video gets posted or any of the videos on the channel, as well as when our live coverage begins. We're also powered by our wonderful channel member community here on YouTube. So thanks to folk like Karen Parrish, I'm Lita, Butterfly, Tony, Malinux, Accelerated Roadside Assistance LLC, that Opal guy, and many others, Josh King. Fritz Caddy, Cars and Cats, and many others for joining us as channel members. Becoming a Spaceflight Now channel member includes a number of perks. Range from discounts at our online shop, shop.spaceflightnow.com, access to member-only videos, and of course the ability to watch all of our launches from the Cape in 4K. Last but not least, you can support what we do here at Spaceflight Now, also using the YouTube Super Chat feature. If you have a comment or question for us today, and it's appropriate to be right on the show, you can use Super Chat and we will address it in turn. We look forward to your queries again, assuming they are appropriate to be right on the show. We'll also be looking for comments from our channel members as well. Currently T minus 54 minutes, 21 seconds and counting. Less than 20 minutes from the point at which the launch director will give their go for the start of propellant load for tonight's mission. Of course, SpaceX not providing mission audio outside of the final five minutes of the count, but we will 
rely on our extensive experience in covering SpaceX and its Falcon 9 flights and let you know the fueling milestones and the visual cues that we're looking for to let you know that fueling is likely on track. SpaceX is running its countdown from the Hangar X site here at KSC, the facility where they refurbish Falcon boosters and prepare them for future flights. SpaceX has support for this launch also, apart from its control room at their headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Again, this early evening launch is targeting liftoff at 5.26 p.m. Eastern, 21.26 UTC. If for whatever reason they need more time and they have not started the fueling process, they do have multiple backup opportunities within the launch window tonight that lasts until 9.24 p.m. Eastern. And if all of those don't uh, stack up well, then they have a 24-hour turnaround opportunity coming up tomorrow, April 17th. That window opens at 5.05 p.m. Eastern. Tell it's a bit of a breezy day here at KSC. However, the launch liftoff weather is pretty ideal for t this afternoon or early evening flight. The 45th Weather Squadron forecast about 90% favorable conditions for a liftoff today. The only watch item is the thick cloud layers rule. And again, if they do have to pivot to an opportunity tomorrow, it's wash, rinse, repeat as far as the weather's concerned. No change from today to tomorrow. Oh, you can hear a little bit of the wind rustling. Again, breezy, but not so much that it would be a hindrance to launch. Also want to thank our wonderful moderators in the live chat. I'd be remiss if I went much further without thanking Stephanie B. I see you joining us this afternoon or in the morning for you. So appreciate that. Try to get the other mods a shout out as I see them enter the chat, so to speak. Do have a five dollar super chat from one of our channel members, Josh King. Really appreciate that, Josh. Asking if the launch from California was scrubbed. And yes, SpaceX did stand down from a potential opportunity to launch the uh Worldview Legion 1 and 2 satellites today. Looking at a little bit later this month for that mission. We'll be sure to update you as we learn more. Somewhat TBD at the moment, but we will provide you with the latest information on the timing and the date over on our website, spaceflightnow.com. You can check the launch schedule for updates for that. So thanks for the question, Josh. And thanks for the support. T minus 50 minutes, 24, or excuse me, 21 seconds now counting. As it is a question that is often asked, let's go ahead and address the trajectory question for this mission. We'll come back to it a little bit closer to liftoff as well when we have some more folks joining with us live. Falcon 9 rocket's going to be launching from the pad you see here from the satellite view and live on the right-hand side of your screen. That is Historic Launch Complex 39A here at KSC. As is the case with all the launches heading to the sixth shell of the Starlink constellation, the Falcon 9 will fly in a southeasterly trajectory heading east of the Bahamas. The Falcon 9 first stage supporting this mission, tail number 1077 in the SpaceX fleet, will separate and land on one of SpaceX's three drone ships. It's got two here on the East Coast and the one up tonight is just read the instructions. The Falcon 9 second stage will continue on with the uh, Starlink satellites. And the payload fairings will be jettisoned just a little bit downrange of the map you see here as well. 
SpaceX has two East Coast-based recovery vessels to scoop up those fairing halves. The one on deck tonight is Bob. Of course, it and the other recovery vessel here in Florida were named after former NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley, the duo that flew aboard the Demo-2 mission back in May of 2020. Part of SpaceX's business model for reuse relies on being able to recover and reuse these payload fairings. As the company stated in a uh, company-wide talk earlier this year, they save about six million bucks per recovery operation. You can see an image of them splashing down underneath a parachute. It's actually kind of a cool uh, TikTok I saw floating around earlier, or in the pun, of someone in a boat that just happened to be nearish to where a uh, fairing half was splashing down and caught the uh, parachute itself. So maybe on Instagram reels as well. But if you want to go search for that, it's kind of a nifty video. This is what the recovery operation looks like as they bring the fairing halves aboard the recovery vessel. This image snapped last year as one of the fairing halves was flying for a 13th time. Currently T minus 46 minutes, 40 seconds and counting. About 10, less than 10 minutes now from the point in which the SpaceX launch director will make the call on the starter propellant load today. So as we have some time before that happens, let's go ahead and step through the countdown timeline, let you know the events that we're expecting as they come up. T minus 38 minutes is when the launch director will take that poll. If the go-ahead is given to start prop load, it'll begin at the T-minus 35-minute mark with the loading of RP-1 or rocket-grade kerosene on both the first and the second stages of the Falcon 9 rocket. At the same time, liquid oxygen is also loaded on board the Falcon 9's first stage. T-minus 16 minutes is when second stage liquid oxygen loading begins. Before that, though, we'll see the so-called big vent from the strong back as the feed lines are chilled, the launch pad. A striking visual and a good indication that fueling is also on time, that big vent. At T minus seven minutes, the chill down of the nine Merlin engines gets underway and it involves flowing a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and turbo pumps that protects them from the risk of thermal shock and damage during the startup sequence. About six minutes before liftoff, the first stage kerosene tank should be full. Then at T-minus four and a half minutes, the strong back retract sequence begins. Starts the clamp arms underneath the payload fairings opening up, and then the transporter erector for the strong back will recline about a degree and a half away from the vehicle. It stays in that position until liftoff, at which point it'll pull back in a much more rapid fashion to clear the way for the vertical climb of the Falcon 9. About two minutes out, liquid oxygen loading should be complete. At that point, the Falcon 9 is fully loaded with one million pounds of propellant. In the final 60 seconds, count, the control of the countdown is handed over from the ground sequencer to the Falcon 9's onboard flight computers. The propellant tanks are brought up to flight pressure. SpaceX launch director will give their go for liftoff at 45 seconds out. The engine ignition command is issued at T minus three seconds. If all nine Merlins ignite and are healthy, the flight computer will give the command for the hold down clamps to release the vehicle for T zero liftoff. Again, currently targeting. 5.26 p.m. Eastern, 21.26 UTC.
T minus 43 minutes and counting. As mentioned, this will be the launch of the Starlink 6-51 mission. Sending up 23 Starlink satellites up to low Earth orbit. Adding to the thousands currently present there. As far as the global view of Starlink service, this is what the service map currently looks like for the Starlink satellites. The light blue areas are where coverage currently exists. The darker blue are areas, countries that are pending or have a planned start date. The grayed out countries are where service is not available. There are no current plans for it to be available there. This is what the Starlink Internet satellites look like stacked in their launch configuration. Again, 23 of these V2 minis are on board this Falcon 9 rocket that you see there live on the right hand side of your screen. Each of them clocking in at about 1,760 pounds or about 800 kilograms. With their solar panels and furl, they have a wingspan of about 100 feet or 30 meters. Unlike their predecessors that used Krypton hull thrusters, the V2 minis use Argon hull thrusters for in orbit maneuvers. Manufactured in Redmond, Washington, near Seattle, they'll be deployed at about 200 miles or 320 kilometers in altitude. Kilometers. Kilometers. Good grief. And they will be uh, operating at 43 degree inclination. Now, T minus 41 minutes and counting about three minutes from the point at which the SpaceX launch director will make the call on the start of propellant load. Taking a look at the live chat here, first off, want to thank the more than 3,100 of you that are joining with us live this afternoon. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button and allow more folks to find their way to this live coverage. That would be very much appreciated. And our thanks to T. McGee for being a channel member at the pad leader level for one month. Really appreciate that, McGee. With a kind message to go along with the one month mark saying, hey, hey, hope you're having a wonderful week so far. It has been a good week. Been a busy week, of course, with the Starliner spacecraft rollout in the very much pre-dawn hours yesterday. Our Adam Bernstein and I were out covering that. You can read more about it on our website now, spaceflightnow.com. And again, we'll have a video going out encapsulating that, as well as the one-on-one -on -one conversation that I did with one of the leads of the Starliner uh, program, Mark Sorensen. That's going to be going up on the channel a little bit later on this afternoon after we conclude this live launch coverage today. Now T minus 39 minutes, 13 seconds and counting. I'm curious what the Starlink V2 minis look like on orbit. Well, SpaceX hasn't released a full image of them in their entirety. We do have this one snapped by HEO Robotics, which shows the two solar panels unfurled, extending from the main body there. This was captured by one of their satellites last year.
Now T minus 37 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. At this point, SpaceX, assuming everything is on track, will have made the call on the startup prop load for today. And that fueling set to begin now in less than three minutes. We will hopefully hear word from SpaceX directly that fueling has begun. Already some interest building for the launch this afternoon. See a little bit of a crowd gathering on the press lawn here at the KSC press site in front of the historic countdown clock in the flagpole there. Again, assuming all is on track for this Starlink 6-51 mission, we are now less than two minutes from the start of talent load on the Falcon 9 rocket. We're now T-minus 34 minutes, 41 seconds and counting. At this point, assuming SpaceX is in fact still on target with today's launch, which all indications at this singular moment in time suggest that they are, propellant load will have started. Again, that process begins with loading RP-1 or that rocket-grade kerosene on board the Falcon 9's first and second stages and loading liquid oxygen on board the first stage. Taking a closer look in at the Falcon 9 rocket. What we're looking for visually as far as signs of fueling, which granted it's a little bit tricky given the time of day and the lighting here, but here's where and what we're looking for. You see there as the uh, strong back of the transporter rector starts to taper up near the base of the Falcon 9 rocket. You see just above that, there's a slightly lighter gray ring on the Falcon 9 first stage. 
that's approximately the area where we expect to start seeing some uh, frost and some vapor form as the super cold densified liquid oxygen is loaded on board the Falcon 9 rocket. And T minus 32 minutes, 33 seconds and counting. We should start to see some signs. There's some evidence of fueling in the next minute or two minutes. But that said, we actually do have word from SpaceX that Helen Load has begun, which is good news and means that SpaceX is committing to a launch attempt coming up in 32 minutes and 5 seconds at 5.26 p.m. tonight, the start of the window, which is fabulous. Taking a look back at our live chat here, want to thank one of our wonderful channel members, Clistia Lee, for gifting 10 Space Flight Now memberships. Really appreciate that generosity, Clistia. And to our 10 newest channel members, first off, welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. If you haven't already, be sure to thank Clistia in the live chat. And we hope you appreciate your time as channel members and stick around. Our thanks also to channel member Donna Hayes for gifting $5 through the super chat feature. Really appreciate that support, Donna, and for being an ongoing channel member. And perhaps I missed it in the live chat here, but. Uh, apparently, it is Callistia's birthday, so a very happy birthday to you, Callistia. And thanks for being a member of our little community here at Space Flight Now. And sharing some of the birthday well wishes, the $20 super chat. That's very kind and generous of you. It says, my birthday wish is for everyone to hit that like button. It's pretty easy to do. It helps people find the stream easier. As we come up on the T-minus 30-minute mark at this point, SpaceX will be loading cryogenic helium into the pressure vessels on the Falcon 9's first stage. The helium is used to pressurize the main propellant tanks during flight. The same process will begin at about T-minus 25 minutes on the Falcon 9's second stage. Thanks also to another one of our wonderful channel members, Zion Lita, the $5 Super Chat. Thank you so much, Lita. Good to see you this afternoon or early evening. Hello. Still very much afternoon in California. Lita says, love it here. Great friends. Wonderful commentary. Thank you. And hello to you. The fueling process underway. Let's go ahead and talk about the launch timeline for this mission. This is the sequence of events after the Falcon 9 leaves pad 39A and begins its journey to deploy the Starlink satellites. It begin, of course, with liftoff at T0, which now that fueling is underway, we know will be targeting 526 p.m. Eastern, 2126 UTC. It'll continue on with the vehicle passing through max Q or the point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle at T plus one minute and 12 seconds. That'll set up a few different events to happen in fairly rapid succession. We'll start with first stage main engine cutoff at T plus two minutes and 26 seconds. That's followed by stage separation three seconds later. Then the second stage ended ignition SES one at T plus two minutes and 36 seconds. And that'll set up for the payload fairings to be jettisoned 
T plus two minutes, 56 seconds. Moving forward a little bit at T plus six minutes and nine seconds, there will be the entry burn of the Falcon 9 first stage. Again, tail number 1077 in the SpaceX fleet going for its 12th flight today. That entry burn set to last about 24 seconds. And depending on conditions, we may or may not be able to see it from the ground, although it's a little bit tricky to catch during the daylight hours. So TBD if our ground cameras will be able to glimpse that entry burn. Following that, though, the landing burn begins at T plus eight minutes and one second. And touchdown on the drone ship, just read the instructions, is anticipated at about T plus eight minutes and 24 seconds. Second stage engine cutoff or Seco 1 comes up. T plus eight minutes, 39 seconds. It'll go into a coast phase until T plus 54 minutes and four seconds when there will be a quick two-second burn of that upper stage engine. Setting it for the Starlink satellites to be deployed at T plus one hour, five minutes, and 13 seconds into flight. That pivot over to a lovely view of the Falcon 9 rocket from our friend Chuck Briggs.
now T minus 22 minutes, 22 seconds and counting. Our friend uh, Pete Carson's uh, had a good view of the moon. There it is back again. Bringing us a lovely view of our nearest neighbor. Some nice daylight views, of course. The moon stole the show last week with the total solar eclipse. Very happy for all of the people that got some great photos and video from that experience. We had a great time talking about it on our weekly show, News from the Press site, with our guests. If you'd like to revisit that conversation, it's up on the channel right now. We had Bill Harwood with CBS News and Elizabeth Howell with Space.com talking about not just their eclipse experience, but also a whole cadre of news items. So that's up on the channel right now. If you'd like a quick refresh on the big news items of the week with some of the great folks that bring the stories to all of us. We're now T minus 20 minutes, 35 seconds and counting. Coming up on the start of the so-called big vent here. As the feed lines are chilled, strung back. And we see that now getting underway. Right on time and a good visual indication that fueling is moving forward on schedule as well. Now T minus 17 minutes, 35 seconds and counting. About a minute or so away from the big vent wrapping up here. 
ahead of second stage liquid oxygen loading, which will come up at T minus 16 minutes is when that process begins on the Falcon 9 rocket. Taking a look here at the live chat, want to thank the more than 8,500 of you that are watching with us live this afternoon. Really appreciate you being with us. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button and allow more folks to find this live coverage as we come into the final 17 minutes of the count. And also want to welcome our newest channel member, Skunk Hogger PS4, joining us with channel membership at the power leader level. Really appreciate that. And also in the realm of getting smarter every day, I did not realize that there was a type of skunk called the hognosed skunk. So there you go. Now T minus 16 minutes, 33 seconds and counting. Should see the conclusion of the big vent right about, there we go. Right about now. Next 20 seconds, lock load on the second stage will begin. We're now at T minus 13 minutes, 42 seconds and counting. So far, it has been a very smooth countdown for this mission today. Getting ready to see the 12th flight of this particular Falcon 9 booster, tail number 1077 in the SpaceX fleet. So while we've got a little time on our hands before the next fueling milestone, which is the engine chill down, let's go ahead and step back through history and talk about the flights of 1077. Starting with, of course, number one, which was a crewed mission, Crew 5. That Crew Dragon mission heading up to the International Space Station on October 5th, 2022. The Dragon that flew that mission was named Endurance. And this flight was distinct for a couple of reasons. The mission was commanded by NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, who became the first indigenous woman to go to space. It was also the first time a Russian cosmonaut flew to the ISS on board a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. Since that point, there has been a continuous seat swap agreement between NASA and Roscosmos. 
So it's Soyuz flights to the ISS include one NASA astronaut. And so far, all the Dragon flights include one cosmonaut. The next flight of this booster, 1077, came on January 18th, 2023, the launch of the GPS-3 space vehicle number six satellite. These series of GPS satellites are manufactured by Lockheed Martin and named after famous explorers. This one was named Amelia Earhart. Launch number three came a month later. That was on February 18th when it launched the Inmarsat 6F2 satellite. That was followed up by the fourth flight on March 29th, the launch of 56 Starlink uh, version 1.5 satellites. That was the Starlink 5-10 mission. The fifth launch came on June 5th when it launched a Cargo Dragon spacecraft to the ISS. That was SpaceX's 28th Commercial Resupply Services Contract 2 mission, or CRS-28. It sent more than 7,000 pounds of research and supplies up to the ISS. There were also a pair of rollout solar arrays that help augment the power supply on the orbiting outpost to this day. Sixth launch came on August 3rd when this booster sent up the Galaxy 37 slash Horizons 4 satellite for Intelsat. This is part of the company's Constellation refresh to meet FCC requirements. Flights 7, 8, and 9 were all Starlink missions. Those were Starlink 6-13 on September 1st, 6-25 on October 30th, 6-33 on December 7th. Tenth flight of this booster, another unique mission, sending up Northrop Grumman's Cygnus spacecraft on the NG-20 mission, coming on January 30th. As part of the company's commercial resupply services contract with NASA, bringing science and supplies to the International Space Station. Currently, SpaceX and Northrop Grumman are the only two companies flying cargo to the ISS, but that's poised to change later this year when United Launch Alliance and its Vulcan rocket sends up Sierra Space's Dream Chaser space plane with cargo on board, beginning its CRS contract missions. And finally, most recently for now, this booster launched the Starlink 6-43 flight that was back on March 10th of this year. We are now T-9 minutes, 40 seconds and counting. A little less than three minutes away from the start of that engine chill-down sequence, pulling a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and turbo pumps on those 9 Merlin 1D engines and helping to protect them from the risk of thermal shock and damage.
We are now at T minus seven minutes and counting. Want to thank the little more than sixteen and a half thousand of you that are joining with us live this afternoon. Really appreciate you spending part of your Wednesday taking a bit of a break from work, or perhaps you're just now getting off work. And if so, very much appreciative that you're spending part of your day with us as we cover the launch of the Starlink 6-51 mission. As we do have quite a bit more folks in here since the last time we talked about trajectory, let's go ahead and get a bit of a refresh for those of us who were here before or an introduction if you're just now joining us or joined us since we talked about it at the start of the broadcast. Taking a satellite view of the pad here where the Falcon 9 will leave from. This is Historic Launch Complex 39A. After the T0 liftoff, which again is targeting 526 p.m. Eastern, 2126 UTC, now that fueling is underway. Apologies for technical staff who are jumping ahead of ourselves a little bit. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Falcon 9 will fly in a southeasterly trajectory, as is the case with all the missions heading to the sixth shell of the Starlink constellation. Falcon 9 first stage vehicle following stage separation will land on one of SpaceX's three drone ships. It's got two over here in Florida, and the one on deck tonight is just read the instructions. The fairing halves will be jettisoned a little bit down range of the map you see here on your screen, and it'll be scooped up by the recovery vessel, Bob. Doug is actually also out in the Atlantic getting positioned for the Starlink launch on deck for tomorrow night as the Starlink 6-52 mission. So if you know someone who was hoping to catch tonight's launch and they just can't get away from whatever they're doing but they've got some time tomorrow go ahead and tell them to come on back and we'll be right here with you for a live launch coverage of that mission as well here's an image of what the fairing halves look like as they're coming down splashing in the ocean waters under a parachute SpaceX saves about six million dollars per recovery this is what that operation looks like when they scoop them up out of the water. Now, T minus four minutes, 10 seconds and counting. At this point, we're expecting the strong back sequence to get underway at the moment. And as we're getting in the loop on the strong back retract sequence. Let's go ahead and just very briefly touch on the Falcon 9 itself. It stands about 70 meters, 229 feet tall, with a diameter of 3.66 meters or 12 feet. The hissing and humming you're hearing are the sounds from the pad there, as we're now getting SpaceX mission audio. So. If you hear me pause, I'm trying to not talk over SpaceX, and I will attempt to not stumble across those callouts. Most of the vehicle made up by the first stage. Again, this vehicle uh, is flying for a 12th time today. It's got nine Merlin 1D engines. Stage engines. one locks load is complete. Fully fueled, produces 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Above the first stage, of course, the inner stage. You can see those titanium winglets that provide stability and steering. Those are hypersonic grid fins. The top of the inner stage are mechanical latches that attach to the second stage. The first stage managed to cut off high pressure helium and used to release them for pneumatic pushers to ensure a clean separation. Also housed in the inner stage is the second stage engine nozzle, the Merlin vacuum engine or the MVAC engine produces more than 200,000 pounds of thrust. They'll be fired twice on today's flight, placing the 23 Starlink satellites into their intended orbit. Burns the same propellant mix, that RP-1 and liquid oxygen, same as the first stage. It'll burn once more after satellite deployment, 
to drive the upper stage back into the atmosphere where it will burn up, helping to eliminate the risk of creating space debris. Finally, up top are the payload fairings, made up of a carbon composite material standing 13.1 meters or 43 feet tall, with a width of 5.2 meters or 17.1 feet in diameter. Stage two, locks load is complete. With that, we hear stage two lock load is complete. The Falcon 9 is now fully fueled with 1 million pounds of propellant. What you're seeing here are the ground gas closeouts. Shader the call for that momentarily. Ground gas closeouts. With a good call, we're just about a minute away from liftoff. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button, allow some more folks to find their way in. And we'll come back to the super chats in just a moment, but want to very quickly thank channel member Artemis for a very generous $100 Falcon super chat. Falcon 9 startup. Thank you so much, Artemis. Really appreciate you supporting us on that level, saying keep spreading the science, guys. Awesome job. And with 40 seconds to go, we should hear the SpaceX launch director give their call go for, for go, go for launch right on schedule. We're now just about T minus 30 seconds to lift off. Fifteen seconds. And here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Engine ignition and liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket on the Starlink 6 51 mission. The Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. In a beautifully composed shot as the Falcon 9 rocket soars above the skies here in the sunshine state. Now 30 seconds to flight. Let's listen to the roar of those nine rolling engines. Flight. We're coming up on max Q, the, po the point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. Great tracking shots from our friend P. Carson's with Max Q Productions, speaking of. It's from our own Adam Bernstein tracking camera. And this from Chuck Briggs. A call for MVAC chill. They're thermally conditioning the Merlin upper stage engine prior to its ignition. Coming up in the next minute, we'll see a few different events in rapid succession. First will be stage separation followed, or excuse me, main engine cutoff followed by stage separation. And then second stage engine start and fairing deployment just before three minutes into flight. We're now 10 seconds from Miko, main engine cutoff. There you see Miko. Oh, great shot. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation. You see those views of Kinda stage separation. Nice onboard camera shots and great tracking work by our team here. 
this particular view on the left hand side of your screen from p carson's but some great camera angles from adam and chuck as well and you see the payload fairings deployed there reflecting the light of the sun And we're seeing a view here from P. Carson's, this from Chuck Briggs. These this is our view from uh Chuck Briggs. You can still see that first stage booster and the upper stage in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Those little pulses you see there from the Falcon 9 first stage, those are the cold gas thrusters helping to control the attitude of the vehicle as it comes back and prepares for the entry burn. We're working to bring back the SpaceX feed. However, it it itself may have gone down. We're working to troubleshoot it, but it appears that SpaceX broadcast is having some issues. Fortunately, though, you are with us live and we will bring you the best possible views that we can although again because it is so bright it's a little bit tricky to catch the uh start of the entry burn here we will do our level best that is coming up at t plus six minutes and nine seconds so a little under a minute now till the start of that entry burn Again, the SpaceX broadcast itself is having some apparent issues, which is why we're not able to currently bring you onboard camera feed from the second or first stage. If SpaceX is able to reestablish that, of course, we will bring those camera views back for you. But again, for some reason, the SpaceX feed is no longer broadcasting as it should be. Coming up on 6 minutes 13 seconds into flight at this point in the countdown. That entry burn should be getting underway. Yeah, it's just a little too bright to be able to see that although our guys are scanning the skies trying to catch a glimpse of that entry burn which lasts about 20 or so seconds 24 seconds but that burn now wrapped up coming up next to t plus eight minutes and one second will be the start of the first stage landing burn and that is too far out and too close to the horizon to be able to see from our ground camera vantage point And again, we apologize for not being able to bring you uh, onboard camera views from uh, the Falcon 9 first and second stages, but that is because, for whatever reason, SpaceX appears to be having issues in broadcasting them out. The 
this point, we're coming up on the start of the landing burn, though. Landing burn now in progress, according to the published SpaceX timeline. Landing scheduled to happen in about five seconds. At this point, the Falcon 9 first stage booster tail number 1077 should be on the drone ship. Just read the instructions. However, we've not gotten confirmation of that from SpaceX, and we again do not have views from them as their feed went down mid launch. And it does appear to have landed. There's some frames that are coming through the, the broken stream. But at this point in time, we've not gotten word from SpaceX that landing occurred, but we're standing by for confirmation from them as well. Now, nine minutes and 47 seconds into the mission at this point, the Falcon 9 upper stage will have gone into a coast phase until T plus 54 minutes and four seconds. That will be followed by a two-second burn of the Merlin vacuum engine, setting it for the Starlink satellites to deploy T plus one hour, five minutes and 13 seconds. Again, we are just waiting confirmation from SpaceX that Things are still on track with this mission from the little bit of stilted uh, video from their stream. It appears as though the first stage booster tail number 1077 was able to land on the drone ship. seeing some from some of you in the the chat that you were able to see I guess the booster did land Now coming up on 12 minutes into the mission. Still no word from SpaceX themselves on the status of things. We'll, we'll keep our eye out for that as we start to wrap up our broadcast here. we do want to thank a few more folks in the live chat for your support this afternoon. Really appreciate that. Thanks to 24-7 AI News for super chat here. Really appreciate that. Saying awesome. Live from a monkey's brain with a $2 super chat. Really appreciate that. Uh, monkey's brain saying your coverage and views improve with every launch. And I will pass those off to the team here since it is very much a, a village effort 
Hunters Run Adventure with a very generous uh, $10 super chat. One of our wonderful channel members. Thank you so much, Hunters. And Rasita Dean with a $2 super chat as well. Thank you so much, Rasita. And again, big thanks. I know it was sort of in the right as we were coming down to the moment of launch, but a thank you again to Artemis, one of our channel members, for a $100 super chat. Really appreciate that, Artemis. Again, thank you for the generosity. Closing things out here, this is where we stand with the mission stats now that the Falcon 9 has launched and has apparently landed on the drone ship. Just read the instructions. This was the 12th flight of the booster 1077, the 324th Falcon 9 launched date. This was the 39th Falcon 9 launch just of this year. This was the 267th Falcon booster reflight with a launch of a booster that has flown at least once. This was SpaceX's 40th launch of the year, including the Starlink or excuse me, the Starship integrated flight test number three. This was SpaceX's 111th orbital launch in the last 365 days, their 81st orbital launch from Pad 39A, and the 174th overall orbital launch from this pad. Worth noting, now with the successful liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket, SpaceX is now just one mission shy from tying NASA and the total number of space shuttle flights that lifted off from this pad in the entire run of the space shuttle program. So look for that record tying 82nd flight coming up here in the not too distant future. Taking a look at the SpaceX bar chart here, we're again at mission number 39 for orbital flights. Slowly making progress on its goal of trying to achieve 144 missions on the year, somewhere between 144 and 150. This was the 78th landing of a booster, we believe, on the drone ship. Just read the instructions. Again, no official word from SpaceX directly. This was the 231st SpaceX drone ship landing to date and the 298th overall SpaceX booster landing coming up on 300 very soon. And finally, moving out to some global mission stats, this was the 28th orbital launch from Florida, the 42nd orbital launch from U.S. soil, the 45th orbital launch from U.S. rocket company, including the three from Rocket Lab down in New Zealand, and the 74th orbital launch from around the world with a couple of mishaps. Here's where the pie chart stands with the U.S. at 45 missions, China in second, 16, Russia with six, Japan with three, India and Iran with two apiece. And we do have a statement from SpaceX coming in the last few seconds here where they say, and I quote, nominal orbital insertion and first stage landing on the drone ship. Just read the instructions confirmed. Uh, Falcon 9's second stage has one additional burn coming up in about 38 minutes, followed about 11 minutes later by satellite deployment. All good news, of course. An unfortunate circumstance that the broadcast uh, went down and we lost the onboard camera views of the Falcon 9 rocket, but good confirmation by SpaceX of those milestones that have passed and of those still yet to come. Again, the two second burn of the Merlin vacuum engine coming up at about T minus 38 minutes, followed about 11 minutes later by Starlink satellite deployment.
before we wrap up, do want to give some kudos to our bond photographers, starting with photo from our Michael Kane. Really appreciate this great shot here. Can't quite tell what flight number that plane is, but that is a 2E plane that is heading over to the UK. Of course, TUI is also going to be operating a cruise line from Port Canaveral, so the travel back and forth is going to be very important for that company. Landing over here on the Space Coast at the Melbourne Orlando International Airport. And then another photo from our Adam Bernstein as the Falcon 9 passed by the American flag here. Great shot of the Falcon 9 in flight with Old Glory in the foreground. And with that, that'll go ahead and wrap things up for our coverage of the Starlink 6-51 uh, mission. Really appreciate all of you for hanging out with us on a Wednesday afternoon. Want to thank our friends Pete Karstens with Max Q Productions and Chuck Briggs for helping to provide tracking views of the Falcon 9 rocket. Extremely critical, especially once the SpaceX feed started running into some issues. So appreciate the fellas there. Also, thanks to our launch photographers. You just saw great examples of their work. You can follow them on their X handle accounts. You can find Adam Bernstein at a burn nyc burn with an e michael kane at md kane jr over on x while you're there be sure to follow space flight now as well if you're not on x formerly known as twitter though you can find us on threads and facebook as well of course right here on youtube if you haven't already be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out the virtual door click the bell icon and turn on all notifications that way you get notified when we go live again coming up as soon as tomorrow evening for the Starlink 6-52 mission. And in the next little bit here, as we are getting ready to share our coverage of the Starliner spacecraft rollout operations, as well as our one-on-one -on -one interview with Mark Sorensen at Boeing, talking about the fueling process of the Starliner spacecraft and what comes next now that it is stacked with the Atlas V rocket. That's all coming up on the channel. As you see, speaking of coming up, the transporter erector moving back to its upright position. Part of SpaceX's process of turning around its launch pad as quickly as possible for future flights. Want to also thank our wonderful moderators in the live chat. So thanks to AstroGen and Stephanie B for helping us out today. Not sure if uh, Astro Joe or Rusty Shackleford were hanging out with us, but appreciate them whenever they are able to help us out. And once again, we are very much appreciative to all of you who have already subscribed to the Space Flight Now channel. If you haven't already, we are on the cusp of 206,000 subscribers. We'd love to cross that hump on hump day. And if you can help us out, if you haven't already, hit subscribe. We'd love to welcome you to the community. And Astro Joe, just working. Live long and prosper to you, brother. And with that, I want to thank our editor, Stephen Young, for running the technical operations of the broadcast. And most importantly, I want to thank you from wherever you're joining us around the world for our live coverage. For all of us here at Space Flight Now, I'm Will Robinson-Smith. Be good to yourselves, be good to others. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.